Salut tout le monde! Dans cet épisode, Nicolas va nous parler de vin en général. In this episode, Nicholas is going to talk to us about wine in general. Et de plus, il va nous apprendre une autre phrase en français. And he's also going to teach us another phrase in French. Allons-y! This is a vineyard we visited last summer in Bordeaux called uh, Le Château Pavé de Luz. It's a cru bourgeois from Margot, mainly from uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon grape and Merlot. Alors, Nicolas is going to talk to us about wine. Hein, bonsoir, tout le monde. Um, yes, uh, this is how to taste a wine, whether it's white, rosé or red. Um, it's quite simple, but I think many people don't know. So the best way to do it uh, is simply to show you how it's done. So I'm going to open a bottle of red wine from Bordeaux. Uh, usually Bordeaux bottles are always the same shape. This why you hear glug, 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 glug when you first pour it. Um, this is hard to open a bottle of wine. So I take, I get rid of uh, the top. Uh, then I just put the, the screw in the middle, if you can. It's not always easy. And then you just go down, probably three quarter, and then three up, go down a bit more, and then finish off with the hand. Then the bottle is open. Then you just need to pour a little bit, like so. See the noise? Can you hear it? Okay. And that's for myself. So you said that noise comes from the shape of the bottle. Oh, the shape of the bottle, yeah. And, and it's known in Bordeaux, but, you know. Uh, so basically, first thing, you look at the wine that tell you all the intensity. Okay, then you just smell it. Then you got different flavor coming up. That is, it's up to you to describe it, you know. Uh, you swirl the glass, so you put it on the table, if you wish. So that brings off the flavors. Okay, you smell it again. So there should be oh, yeah, a bit that's more. more fragrant. Okay, then, then the way to taste the wine. So you put a little bit of wine in your mouth and you just have a mouthwash with it. Or let some hair go in through it. And then you can some swallow it. Some air or some hair? Some air. Okay. Some, sorry, <laughs> some air. And then you just uh, swallow it. And then you're going to have um, many different tastes. With red wine, you should taste everything more on the, on the gum, on the top of the gum. And then on the tip of the tongue will be the, the sweetness. Okay. And the, the bitterness will be at the back of the tongue. Okay. So if you test all this, um, all together, it means the wine is well balanced. That's what mm. a wine well balanced means. So let's just do it. I'll show you how to do it. It's one. It is well balanced, but it's very tannic because you mm -hmm. you feel all on on the gum on the top of the gum, mm -hmm. maybe a bit more than usual. But then again, wine do taste very different with food, so that would be uh, very nice with a red meat uh, in particular. Uh, you can also add it with a, a chicken or or even pork, but it tastes much better with red meat, especially not to cook because of the protein. So the protein married with the red wine goes really well, really, really well. So that is, this is so simple to understand um, that it is hard to taste a wine. Thank you. This beautiful sculpture was outside the second vineyard we visited. Propriété Château d'Ozac. Chérie, yes. Could you please tell us about Champagne? Where it's from, how it's made, things like that. Well, Champagne is a region of France, mm -hmm. uh, 90 miles of uh, the east of Paris. Mm -hmm. um, we produce uh, fizzy wine, naturally fizzy. Okay. Uh, Champagne is made of three different grapes. So we got a white oh. grape called Chardonnay, that everybody knows. And two red grapes, Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. Two red grapes go with yes. a white grape? Well, and yes. make a white wine? Yes. So okay. what happened? Because when you crush the grapes, mm -hmm. you produce only the white juice. Oh. If you remove 
the skin yeah. uh, is going to stay white. Okay, okay, that makes so sense. So for this reason, so when once the wine is made, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do a second fermentation. So okay. we're going to add yeast and sugar. Mm -hmm. So the, the yeast they're going to feed on sugar. Okay. And that's going to make um, alcohol and carbon dioxide. Okay. So that's why it's fizzy naturally. Okay, so that gives it that extra fizz, yes, right? Yes, that's why. I see, okay, good, nice. So when the wine is done, uh, we need to get rid of the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. So we turn the bottle upside down. Okay. And uh, we do what we call remuage. So mm -hmm. we move the bottle from right to left um, every day for a few months. Okay. Uh, once once it's done, when all the cinnamon went down the neck. So that makes the cinnamon all come down. All come okay. down, yes. Mm -hmm. We freeze the neck. Okay. And when the neck is freeze, mm -hmm. we take the, the corked, off the bottle, and we replace it with a new one. So the sediment comes with the cork, I yeah, guess. Yeah, because it's, it's okay, it's, it's frozen on there. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, after that, we replace it with a new one. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, uh, these days uh, it's all done mechanically. Right. Uh, but a hundred years ago, it was done. Oh, by manually, hand. By yeah. hand. So there was probably a few. You had to really quickly off. do it and replace I'm, it. I'm sure they were quick. <laughs> Somebody sure probably had their mouth open underneath they, to they catch probably it. Did. That would be smart. Yes. Okay. And so that's um, why are some champagnes dry and others are well, fruity? Well, if the champagne is dry, if you go to a store mm -hmm. and you see uh, on the label of the bottle of champagne, it's a blanc de blanc. It means it's made from the Chardonnay grape only. It means it's from the Chardonnay grape. Okay. Chardonnay grape okay. Only. It's just a white grape. So that is okay. very dry. Okay. Okay, but if you see a blanc de noir, mm -hmm. that means it's from the two red grapes, Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. That means it's going to be ah, more fruity. Okay. It's going to be a demi sec. I see. Okay. But most champagne, most uh, champagne are a blend of the three grapes: Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, ah. Pinot Meunier. Yes. What was that called? Did you say when they blended? The assemblage. Assemblage. Okay. Assemblage. Okay. So assemblage, instant sugar to ferment the second time, mm -hmm. then remuage. Okay. And then we just bottle the wine. Nice. And it's uh, ready for sale. Okay. And you love champagne. Oh, I do because, uh, in fact, when I was born and baptized, um, the priest put some uh, champagne over my lips and um, ever since I just can't stop drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> So lucky. Um, oh, so yes. not only French, but baptized with champagne. Okay, we like that. Mm -hmm. I really do. All right. Well, um, where is the champagne? Are we going to have a glass? Oh, uh, not tonight. I'm okay, afraid. we might have to wait for your birthday, but that's okay. We can do that. Merci, chérie. De rien. Le plaisir pour moi. Et voilà. Tout le plaisir pour moi. Mm -hmm. Voilà. Chérie, mm -hmm. merci pour toutes ces informations sur le vin. Tout le plaisir était pour moi. Okay. Voilà. And you're going to teach us what phrase in French? It's called la grâce matinée. La grâce matinée. La grâce ça matinée, veut... ça veut dire que tu restes au lit jusqu'à midi. Okay. Tu ne te lèves seulement que pour faire du café, pour préparer le petit déjeuner, et tu retournes au lit. <laughs> okay. Voilà, ça s'appelle ne rien faire. Perfect. La grâce matinée. Ooh, ça veut dire bon matinée. Mm. So in English, that means? It means you stay in bed until noon. You stay in bed until noon. So uh, you get like, up to make coffee, um, prepare breakfast, have breakfast in bed, and you get up when you feel like it. Perfect. Une grâce matinée. Une grâce it's matinée. It's a lazy morning. Voilà. Et voilà. Merci. And next week, we're going to celebrate your birthday. Wow, I can't wait. I know you can't. All right, we'll see you then. A plus. Au revoir. <laughs>